So first up, a reminder about the compound interest formula. So it is the future value is equal to the present value, 1 plus i m to the power of n, where this is your future value, this is your present value, This is your interest rate, written in decimal fraction notation. So in other words, it is going to be 0 0.01 or 0 0.1, etc. This is your compounding in periods. So if it is monthly, it would be 12. If it is yearly, it would be 1. So m is equal to 12. If monthly, m is equal to 1. If yearly, m is equal to 365 if daily kind of situation. So the overall i to the power of um, subscript m is your effective interest rate. And then n is your duration. And a reminder that your n and your m units must coincide. So if m is 12, say m is monthly, then your n must be in months. So that's what we mean by them as coincide. Right, so let's begin and do some examples. So in this example, you take out a loan of 700,000 at 15% per annum compounded monthly. What is the total you need to pay at the end of the year assuming no interest or repayments are made? So no interest payments or repayments are made. Right. So the first thing that we need to look at and consider is the fact that it mentions that it's compounded monthly. So that's going to clue you into what formula you need to use. So it's the compound interest formula. So it's the future value is equal to your present value, one plus I M to the power of N. Next up, we go, okay, what information do we have? So we have a loan of 700,000 is taken out. So we have present value is equal to R 700,000. And is taken out at 15% per annum compounded monthly. So that is written in nominal interest. So the kind of thing that banks would show you to advertise the loan. And nominal interest is the symbol J. So that is 15% per annum compounded monthly. Now we know we actually need I. So let's convert nominal interest to the effective interest rate. So at the moment, we just when we look at the effective interest rate, we're just looking at the compounding periods. So it's compounded monthly. So we're going to be looking for I 12. Remember the 12, the subscript indicates, you know, the comp how many times it compounds in a year. And then to get I 12, we take the nominal interest, which is per year, and we convert it to, you know, a per month kind of a situation. So we say 0 0.15, the J, divided by 12, and that's going to give us the interest per month. Now, I'm not going to round it off anything here. I'm just going to leave it as is. So let's remove that equal sign. Because remember, when you put it into your formula, you want it to be as accurate as possible. You don't want to introduce rounding off errors as before you even get you know, to the end result. OK, so what next do we have? It says here, what is the total you need to pay at the end of the year? So we have n is a year. So n is equal to one year. And now we need to check, and this is going to be a default, that you'll do no matter what, you'll check that this M year corresponds with the units year. Currently it doesn't because it's 12, so it's monthly, and there it says it's in years. So we convert N into months. So that's just 1 times by 12 to get 12 months. And then they correspond and we good. So this is specifically for the formula that we're using. Right. So now we have all the information, let's just see that it ticks off all the boxes in the formula. So we have the present value, we have the I12, and we have the N. So now we can just go ahead and put it in the formula and solve. 
So we have the future value is equal to 700,000, one plus 0 0.15 divided by 12, brackets 12. And if we go ahead and put that into our calculator, we're going to get approximately equal to, because we're rounding off now, so let's just do that, 812528,16. We round to two decimal places when we're handling finances or money. So now we have the future value. We can be very specific here and actually write it as the future value twelve. And again, approximately equal to 812528.16. Notice I'm using the comma here. That's just so it shows up on your screens more. Um, traditionally, I would use the dot to represent, you know, the cents. So I wouldn't use the comma. And if you're inputting this onto like computers and stuff, or even your calculator, the dot is, or the period is the preference usually. Okay, so in this example, it is you take out a loan of 700000 at 11% per annum compounded daily. What is the total you need to pay at the end of the year, assuming no interest or repayments are made? So no interest payments. I know it's written a bit dodge, but it means no interest payments are made. Now you will see that this is very similar to the question we just did. The only difference is that it's now 11% per annum compounded daily. The other one was 15% per annum compounded monthly. So that's going to be the main change when we're working out the answer. So let's start off by just reminding us that it is compound interest. So the future value is equal to PV one plus I M to the power of N. Okay, so let's look at everything that we know. So we know that the loan is for 700,000. So we know the present value is equal to 700,000. Now we have the nominal interest rate over here. How do we know it's the nominal interest rate? Because it says per annum and in brackets compounded daily. So this is J, and that's 11% per annum compounded daily. Now, when we're using the formula, we need the effective interest rate. So the effective interest rate is going to be I subscript M, where M is the compounding period. So in this case, it's days, which is 365. Then it's going to take the nominal interest in decimal fraction notation, in other words, 11% divided by 100, so 0 0.11 and we're going to divide it by the number of days in a year. So we're taking that yearly interest and moving it down to days in a year. So we're looking at the duration of a year. So we have N is equal to one year. And as always, we're going to check that the units correspond for our formulas. So N is one year, and this is 365. So they're different at the moment. So we need to change N to days. So that is just going to be 1 times 365, which is going to give us 365 days. And now we can put everything into our formula. So our formula is the future value is equal to 700,000, 1 plus 0 0.11 divided by 365, or to the power of 365. And if we go ahead and solve that, we are going to get 781381.70. And I use the approximately equal sign because I rounded off. Um, you don't have to overly stress about that. And again, use two decimal places for finance um, money kind of a situation. One last thing is once again, we can actually write it as five is equal to 781381.70, and that 365 is telling us when that future value is. And that's just gonna help clarify things, particularly with work later on. Everything that we know. 